In a few hours of entering Gaza, I was confronted with this. A funeral for one of five men, all members of the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade. Al-Aqsa is Fatah's military wing. They were killed by Israeli rockets. Hamas may now rule Gaza, but Al-Aqsa remained popular with the Gazan people because of their attacks on Israel. Their yellow flags flutter from many rooftops. Through a contact, I was offered a chance to see up close what Al-Aqsa are doing in Gaza. I am told we're going to a practice missile launch. I decide to carry on filming. This is the reality of the weekly reports of Palestinian rocket attacks into Israel. A few days before I arrived in Gaza, a rocket like this landed near a kindergarten in Israel. The fuse is lit. Everyone, including me, runs for their lives. Israeli attack helicopters can respond with deadly force within minutes of the launch. I subsequently learned that no one in Israel had been hurt by this rocket. But that was just luck. Moments later, Al-Aqsa's commander in Gaza shows me how he uses Google Earth to search for targets inside Israel. Hamas may bear the international condemnation for these assaults, but it clearly isn't Hamas who is behind them. Records show that since Hamas took power, their militant activity against the state of Israel has all but stopped. But the rockets haven't. Lake Victoria, the source of the River Nile. Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda share these waters. The Luo live on Kenya's side of the lake. The Luo are fish eaters, not meat eaters. So many fishermen have come here from across the country to cash in on the Nile perch export trade. It's called the Nile perch gold rush. Men leave early in the morning to catch Nile perch. The women wait on dry land to sell the fish. People live in tin shacks built in haste to house the growing population who came here in search of Nile perch. This is Winnie Ogama. She closed her shop to take care of her dying husband. After his death, she couldn't afford to reopen it. Now, she buys Nile perch from fishermen to sell to the export factories. Here she's watching one of her catches coming in. Winnie paid £65 for the catch and earns a small fee. Winnie still has to pay fishermen another price for bringing her fish, sex for fish. It's known here as jaboya, meaning an intimate client relationship with a fisherman. Winnie talks about her experience with one fisherman in particular. After I'd rejected him, he started not to bring for me fish. And it ended that he was trying to stop other fishermen too from bringing me fish, saying that uh, uh, Winnie, she, uh, she's a bad girl, she doesn't understand, why do you give her fish? The UN blames Jaboya for the high rate of AIDS here. One third of the children at this school are orphaned. Winnie has AIDS. She won't admit it on camera. This photo is her before she was infected. She believes Jaboya gave her AIDS. There's only one way to explain what's going on here. It's like being caught on this roundabout in Kasumu. More fishermen catch more Nile perch. There's more Jaboya and more AIDS. This means more widows and more orphans. So, more Jaboya and more AIDS. Bye.
استجاب الخدام لم يتكلم قط انسان هكذا فلا يمشي في الضرائب In this little church in Bethlehem in the Palestinian West Bank, the worshippers engage in a slightly macabre ritual. They say these chains held a saint while he was tortured. He became a Christian martyr, a patron saint of Palestine and of many countries and cities in Europe. This is the town where Mary and Joseph came to seek shelter. Where Christians say God sent his only son to earth. And the wise men came to marvel at the birth of Jesus. But the pilgrims of Bethlehem also have a special place in their hearts for someone else. He's the man on the horse who slayed the dragon. Around here, St George is seen as a homegrown hero and faith in him is forging some very unlikely friendships. Bethlehem's Muslim population is growing as its Christian community dwindles. There are tensions between the two groups. But this shared belief in St George, al Hadda the Green, still unites the faiths. There's a piece of St George's body housed in this tomb of stone, but Father Kalitsa says St George still walks the earth. People gain faith and gain power from his miracles. People have actually seen him. It's not something usual to see these two religions come every day closer and closer. And because of St George, this is happening. Since the mid-90s, around 500 children and teenagers have gone missing in the small Balkan country of Albania. That is an average of one boy or girl vanishing every week. Eva Zajmi, Minister of the Atira and coordinator of the fight against people trafficking. The largest group targeted by people traffickers are women who are forced into prostitution and their children. They're abducted to become slaves, part of organised crime, victims of the sex trade, or, in the most tragic cases, subject to organ extraction. Walking through Corker's slums, it quickly becomes obvious why it has proved so easy to abduct children. It is clear that officials have absolutely no idea how many people live in this area, nor how many births there are. Mothers could easily sell their newborn, and criminals would have no problem abducting a child. With no flats, these children are left to roam free, spending most of their time on the streets. <laughs> Nazmir Greca, one of the worst people dealers, is housed in Tirana prison. He is the head of the criminal group that sold newborn babies and children for illegal adoption in Jenica, in northern Greece. <laughs> I was sentenced to 20 years in jail, even though I'm innocent. We made maybe 20, 30 deals at the most. This lively midday market seems anything but dangerous, yet even here, abductions have been reported. This boy tells us the story of his brother's abduction two years ago. They were just trying to earn pocket money in the market. We used to collect plastic bags and sell them to the stallholders to earn some cash. What time did you last see your brother? Noon? Half past one, maybe? All of a sudden, he was gone. I looked for him everywhere, but he wasn't at home or anywhere to be found. I haven't seen him since. We always used to meet each other at the same time, and that time was the last. Larim's little nine-year-old brother disappeared on the 7th of July, 2004. Ever since that day, the heavily traumatised boy returns to the market, hoping to find some trace of his little brother, Arturi. He still hopes that they might meet again.